What's up guys, Parker here. Here's a fun trick on how to create a simple burn down chart. Burn down charts can be a little hard to set up because for the most part, you're not gonna have data for the entire length of your sprint. For example, uh, here's a simple burn down chart for my current sprint, sprint two. And you see, I only have remaining hours data until today, which is April 2nd. But for burn down charts, you wanna show the entire length of your sprint period. So I wanna be able to show this chart uh, until April 19th, which is the end of my sprint, um, for whatever day it is currently. So for example, sprint one, which has already been completed, shows the burn down chart from 250 hours until the end of my sprint, where I want to end up around zero, until the last day of my sprint, which is, uh, which is March 20th. And sprint two picks up on March 20th, it starts over, but now since it's only, only April 2nd, I only have data until today's date, but I still wanna show that fixed x-axis date range of the end of my sprint, which is April 19th. So we're gonna go ahead and walk through this. It's not too hard to set up, but it definitely is tricky if you don't know um, the methodology. So for example, here is the data that, uh, my sprint data. So basically we have sprint one and sprint two. Sprint one starts on February 18th and I start with a certain number of remaining hours and that burns down close to zero. And then sprint two picks up on March 20th, and I start over with 300 remaining hours, and that burns down to today's date, April 2nd, which is only at 171. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up this dynamic, um, this dynamic burn down chart based on the sprint selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new file. I already have the data loaded in. So here's my data, same data I just showed you. So I just wanna illustrate why this is difficult. So if we throw in our remaining hours into values and date in the axis, and we'll go ahead and throw in a little slicer on the left for what sprint it is. For these purposes, I'm going to make that single select. So you can see that we only have data for um, basically how much data we have in our table. So sprint two, you see that it only goes from March 20th to April 2nd, and it's never gonna show out to April 19th, the end of our sprint, uh, because there isn't any data to show that. So the first step uh, to make this happen is we need to go to modeling and create a new date table that's gonna have all of the dates in question. So I'm gonna call this date range. And we're gonna set this equal to the calendar function. Calendar allows you to specify a start date and an end date, and it'll fill in uh, the difference between the start date and end date with those daily date values. So our start date, our first sprint, started on uh, February 2019, February 18th, 2019. So we're gonna use 2019 to 18. So that's the first date we want in our date table. The last date, let's just say we want this to extend until the end of the year, 2019, 12, 31. So let's go ahead and click enter and let's see what that just did. So if we go to our date range table, you see we have data from February 18th, which was our first sprint until, uh, until the end of the year. So that's good. Now we need to create a relationship between that table. So we can drag date onto date and alter this relationship because we want this to be one to many, just in case we get more sprint data in the future and we want to set this equal to single. So as you can see, we have a one to many relationship from our new date table to our data table, so our raw data. Um, we need to go back to our report. And the last step to make this date range always show the full sprint date range is we need to set up a measure that will create a value um, for every day in that date range. And on top of that, a burn down chart looks best when you have the actual hours next to the expected hours. So that will be an ideal line of how the sprint should burn down. So we'll go ahead and create a new measure. I'm gonna call this uh, planned, or planned hours. So first we're going to calculate the first day of our sprint. We're gonna set that as a variable called sprint start date. And this is gonna be a simple calculate function where we're getting the first date of our date column in our data, but specifically with all selected of our data table. 
So for our current selection, what is the first date of our sprint date? Let's go ahead and return that. And we are going to throw this into the X axis, or no, we're gonna throw this into the tooltips just so we can see the value that's coming up. So for sprint two, our sprint start date was 320. And you see that in the tooltip, it's always 320. For sprint one, our sprint start date was 218. So that's still true. So that's step one. Next, we wanna calculate days since the start of the sprint date. So we're gonna call this days since start. We're gonna set this equal to the date diff function. Date diff allows us to uh, calculate how many days it's been since a certain date. So we can use our sprint start date we just calculated from max of our date range date. And in this circumstance, date, uh, max date range date basically just calculates where um, the date range is in our visual. So on March 24th in our visual, max date range date is going to be March 24th. So finally, we need to set how many, or how we're gonna calculate the difference. So we're calculating the difference in days. So we can throw in days since start. Oh, I think I have a problem. Oh yeah, I need to uh, close off the max. So we can throw in days since start in our return value to see how many days it's been since the start. So before we go any further, I forgot, uh, we need to switch out our date column from data and use the date from the calendar table we created. So switch that to date. So now when we check our uh, days since start in our tooltip, we can see how many days it's been. So on the first day, it's been zero days. On the second day of the sprint, it's been one day since and then two, three, so that's perfect. Next, we're gonna create another variable that's uh, how many hours we started with in the beginning of our sprint. So we're gonna call this beginning start. We'll set that equal to calculate max of our remaining hours, all selected data. Close that off and return that. And we see that we have in the beginning 250 remaining hours. And then, yep, we have 250 hours, the entire date range. So perfect. One more variable. I'm going to call this sprint length. So for me, my sprint length is 30 days. For you, it might be a two week sprint. So maybe 14 days, um, but that is up to you. So I'm just going to leave that at 30. And then finally, I'm going to create my actual return statement. And this is what's going to set our fixed X axis. So I'm going to say if max date from our date range is less than or equal or sorry, greater than or equal to our sprint start date and our max of our date range date is less than or equal to the sprint start date plus our sprint length, I want to return a calculation for what our expected uh, hour should be. So this is simply our beginning start minus days since start times beginning start divided by our sprint length. So if that was a lot, don't worry. Um, so our beginning start was 300, or sorry, 250 hours. So then we're subtracting, let's say on the first day, it's one times 250 divided by sprint length. So 250 divided by 30 is roughly eight. So every day we're reducing eight hours. Finally, if, it's, uh, if our date is not in this range of our sprint start date until our sprint end, we want to return blank. And that's our entire measure. So if we go ahead and throw in our planned hours into the values, we can see this nice burn down chart and this is dynamic. So now when we select sprint two, which is our current sprint, which isn't finished, we now have our, um, we now have our entire date range for our entire sprint. So since we are creating a value for this measure called planned hours that spans from the beginning of our sprint until the end of our sprint, even though we don't have data, um, for our actual hours remaining, since we have a measure that's gonna calculate a value 
uh, until the end of our sprint, we are able to show that fixed X axis. So that's pretty much the entire trick. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's actually pretty easy to do once you know how to set it up and it's completely dynamic to the sprint that you are selecting. So if you like this trick, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.